so uh, let's start uh, thank you everyone uh, for joining the talk and uh, it's like uh, if you look at the wildlife conservation or the uh, management in india then uh, indian government already uh, created around 1000 uh, uh, protected areas in india which are acting as the uh, cornerstone in the conservation and management of the wildlife but uh, in addition to these uh, protected areas the large number of wild animals are uh, living or taking refuge outside the protected areas and these areas are dominated by the uh, local communities or the people who are sharing them with the uh, wild animals so it is very very important to understand uh, what uh, important role the local communities play in wildlife management in india so uh, you can say that uh, both the uh, local communities and the wildlife management they are uh, linked with, uh, with each other and they are uh, closely uh, related with each other we cannot uh, look uh, at the present scenario we cannot uh, look at the uh, wildlife management or the wildlife uh, conservation without uh, considering the uh, local uh, communities so why uh, while i am uh, talking about the local communities uh, local communities are the people uh, it includes tribal and non tribal who are sharing range with wildlife and have a dependency on wildlife habitat or the forest resources so in my talk i am focusing on those people whether they are tribal or the non tribal who are sharing a range with a wildlife and in some term or some way they have some dependency on the uh various resources which are also uh, utilized uh, by the wild animals or you can say that uh, there is a, a sharing of the resources by the people and the uh, wildlife and when uh, uh, we are looking at the uh, wildlife management so wildlife management uh, include all the uh, practices uh, which are implemented Uh, for conservation of uh, wildlife including uh, plants and the animal and uh, their uh, habitats so uh, before going to uh, into the details of the uh, presentation uh, i would like to go through what is the need of uh, the involvement of local communities in wildlife management or why it is important to involve local communities in wildlife management if you look at the uh, wildlife areas or the any wildlife habitat in india then you will found that uh, in every area or every part of the india wildlife is uh, sharing range with the local communities or there is no not uh, not a single area in india which is uh, free uh, from the humans or human uh, and uh, human uh, activities so uh, by considering this fact local communities are one of the important stakeholders so uh, i am talking about what is the uh, need of uh, involvement of local communities in wildlife management so uh, i already told you that all the areas where wildlife is existing they are also habitated by uh, the local communities and that's why the local communities are one of the important stakeholders of the wildlife management so uh, we should uh, definitely uh, involve uh, the local uh, communities in the uh, wildlife uh, management and if we uh, do not uh, consider the role of local communities in uh, wildlife uh, management and the conservation then uh, all the protected areas which are uh, located in india they become the island of conservation and these islands of conservation they are surrounded uh, by the local communities and uh, the uh, initial uh, approach of the uh, protected area or the protected area management keeps uh, local uh, people away from benefits and the imposes cost of conservation on the local community because whenever a uh, protected area is created the cost of conservation or the cost of creation of a protected area is borne by the local communities in terms of the various uh, things like livestock uh, killing by the carnivores and uh, crop damage by the herbivores so if 
uh, they have to bear the uh, cost of conservation and they are not getting any uh, thing from the uh, protected area or the creation of the protected areas or there is no involvement of the local communities in the management of the uh, wildlife then we will have uh, the communities which have negative approach towards the conservation or they have anger uh, towards the people who involve in the wildlife conservation or even the uh, wildlife species so it leads to the uh, hostility among the local communities towards the com uh, towards the conservation and which affect the whole goal of uh, conservation so uh, if we uh, look at this if the uh, protected areas or the wildlife areas they are uh, surrounded uh, by the hostile uh, local communities when then we cannot ensure the long term conservation of wildlife in these areas because if there are host uh, hostile uh, local communities around the protected areas it is very difficult uh, to uh, handle uh, the incidences of uh, the uh, uh, conflict because over the time when we get the independence and over the time the perceptions of local changed uh, uh, about the first department and the police department in initial days uh, people are very uh, afraid of the forest department but slowly slowly this fear uh, gone away and now uh, the people are uh, involved in many activities which are detrimental uh, for the wildlife conservation we can understand uh, this uh, issue with uh, the few uh, like two example of the uh, conflict issues in the corvid tiger reserve the corvid tiger reserve uh, can be uh, divided into two parts or the two zone uh, two zones north zone and the south zone and uh, the headquarter of the uh, corvid tiger reserve is located in the uh, north part of the uh, corvid tiger reserves and most of the ngos which are working uh, for the betterment of the local community they also focus in the uh, 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 south zone of the corbett tiger reserve so uh, and uh, most of the tourism is also in the south zone of the corbett tiger reserve so here in south zone people are involved uh, in the various activities of the conservation and they are getting uh, livelihood in terms of the nature guides but this is not the case uh, in the north zone of the corbett tiger reserve and there are many incidences of uh, human mauling and killing by tiger and leopard in south zone but always forest department and the people who involved in the conservation they are able to handle the situation but there was an incident in the uh, north zone of the corbett tiger reserve where a leopard entered a blaze and uh, forest department uh, captured the leopard but the local communities in the uh, north zone have very uh, hostile uh, approach towards the conservation because there is no involvement of the forest department uh, with the local communities so the uh, communities they burnt the leopard alive in the presence of the forest department so it's like a very uh, tragic incidence which was recorded in the uh, garhwal area of the uh, corbett tiger reserve so you can understand that until unless we have a uh, regular uh, dialogue or the regular involvement of the local communities in the wildlife management they become very hostile uh, towards the wildlife conservation and uh, second issue is that with the success of uh, wildlife conservation efforts population of wildlife wild animal is increasing now because most of the protected areas if you look at the uh, population of the animals in most of the protected areas the population is increasing so when the population of the wild animals like tigers a leopard and uh, even the elephant it increase they uh, disperse from the uh, protected areas to the surrounding areas and these uh, surrounding areas they are Uh, dominated uh, by the human society so in such situations uh, conservation strategies should be focus on maintaining positive relationship with the communities and to ensure the uh, conservation of dispersing wildlife it is crucial to involve 
local communities in wildlife management means if you want to have a positive relationship with the local communities then they must be involved in the wildlife management otherwise uh, they are uh, like they will uh, take the wildlife or the people who involved in the uh, to have positive relationship with the uh, local communities who are sharing a range with the wild animal it is uh, essential that we must involve them in the wildlife management uh, this is the another uh, incidence uh, from the uh, bandagar tiger reserve a tiger entered in a blaze and taken shelter in a house uh, in an adjoining blaze and the uh, forest department successfully uh, brought back uh, this tiger from the uh, house of the village uh, that house but this is because because uh, the first department is already doing lots of work with the local communities so uh, they did not interfere uh, with the uh, operation of the forest department and this is the another example uh, this is the another example in uh, north sedol uh, forest division uh, which is uh, located adjoining to the wandago tiger reserve uh, this uh, slot bear chose a house middle of a village to give birth to cubs and on getting this information uh, the people or the uh, non governmental organization and the forest department who are working in this area they requested the villagers and the owner of the house to do not disturb the mother and they uh, provided some compensation uh, to the uh, the owner of this house and uh, uh, the uh, people did not disturb uh, this uh, mother and after a few days uh, she left the house without any uh, uh, problem so uh, such kind of uh, the uh, uh, in such uh, in such incidents if you do you do not have or the forest department do not have uh, the good relationship with the uh, people then they are uh, detrimental to the wild animals and even the uh, for the uh, forest department and uh, even that uh, when uh, there was a study uh, conducted by the indian institute of public administration uh, uh, on the uh, pa management in india so uh, this study uh, which published in two parts so this uh, study uh, also uh, conclude that that the lack of uh, political will for wildlife conservation is partially a manifestation of lack of support of local communities for wildlife management because these local communities are the boat bank of the politicians so if the local communities are against the uh, uh, conservation or the uh, or the creation of a protected areas then it is not possible to get the support of the political leader also so if and uh, this political support is very very uh, imperative or necessary to achieve the uh, goal of the conservation so that's why if we want to have the political support for the uh, conservation it is necessary to involve the local communities in the wildlife management and india also made commitment to uh, uh, the uh, that convention on biological diversity and that by the year 2007 it would ensure fully participatory mode of protected area management means india already promised that uh, by 2007 they will have some uh, guidelines or the policies which enable uh, the people uh, participation in the uh, protected area management or the wildlife management and by uh, having this uh, the indian government also made uh, the amendment in the wildlife uh, protection act of india to create uh, some uh community uh, some uh, categories of the protected areas like conservation and community reserves which has uh, the place for the involvement of the local communities in the wildlife management so uh, let's uh, discuss how this uh, inclusion of the local communities in the wildlife management emerged so shifting of the uh, paradigm from exclusion to inclusion because initially the local people or the local communities are excluded uh, from the wildlife management if you look at the uh, various uh, rules which are framed uh, during the british era 
there is no involvement of locals in the wildlife management during british era many uh, uh, wildlife rules and the act were framed uh, for the uh, conservation of the wild animals like the elephant Conserva preservation act 1879 world birds protection act 1887 wild birds and animal protection act 1912 indian forest act 1927 Haley national park act 1936 but when we uh, go through all these acts or the laws which are created uh, for the uh, wildlife conservation or the wildlife management then you will found that all the uh, laws they uh, ensure the state uh, monopoly over the wildlife management there is no involvement of the local communities or the local people in the management of wildlife and this law only expanded the power of the state by providing for reserve forest which were close to the people and by empowering empowering the forest administrations to impose penalties for any transgression of the provision of the act some of the laws were enacted so as to protect the resource from the natives is itself so that the british can utilize them for their own needs so in a british era the there's not a, a single uh, law or a or, or a act which uh, talk about the involvement of the local communities in the wildlife so then uh, look at the uh, uh, the laws which are uh, framed in the independent india so after uh, getting independence uh, india has its own conservation laws but if you look at uh, the initial days of the our uh, wildlife laws or the various uh, acts which we passed in the initial days of the independent of the India, we adopted the practices of the British era. Means we also adopted the practices of exclusion of the local communities from the management of the wildlife. And there is no provision for the involvement of local communities in wildlife management. And later on uh, in uh, 80s or the late uh, 70s many uh, conservationists emphasized the role of local communities in the management of wildlife like the mother god will assist kothari even that uh, there is a committee uh, uh, constituted by the uh, late indra gandhi under the uh, chairmanship of the mother of sindhya it also uh, advocated uh, for the involvement of local communities in the management of the wildlife or the people's involved in involvement in the conservation of wildlife and perceptions of people change over the time so now over the time when the perception of the people change over the time there are many uh, protests from the local communities against the forest department or the people who are uh, involved in the conservation of wildlife so uh, considering all these facts when and and then uh, media also highlighted uh, the uh, role of the local communities in the wildlife conservation so then after this uh, government accepted the need and start giving the space uh, to local communities in uh, wildlife uh, conservation so then uh, there are uh, various uh, steps uh, taken by the government indian government to uh, promote uh, local communities uh, participation in the wildlife management so as i already told you this is start in 1980s so first step is uh, the uh, in uh, national forest policy of the 1988 it has some provision for the involvement of the local communities in wildlife management or the forest management or the management of the habitat of the wildlife and then in 90s, uh, there is a program or there is a guidelines for the joint uh, forest management. And uh, in 90s also, there is a program which is uh, known as the eco development program where uh, we uh, emphasize the involvement of the local communities. And then in 2002, uh, there is an amendment in the uh, Wildlife uh, Protection Act to create two protected areas which has the space for the involvement of local communities in wildlife management and in 2012 uh, 
that even the uh, National Tiger Conservation Authority of India, it issues the guidelines for setting of local advisory committee in all the tiger reserves. So I shall discuss in the uh, next slides about all these uh, steps one by one. So when we uh, look at the uh, National uh, Forest Policy 98, so uh, this policy uh, of the uh, 1988, it encourages local participation in forest management. And it has uh, outlined two objectives, which are focused on the involvement of the local communities in the uh, management of the forest or the habitat of the wild animals. So the, uh, there are uh, various uh, objectives of the uh, national forest policy, but I am just focusing on the uh, two objectives, uh, which are uh, which emphasized uh, the role of local communities in the wildlife management. So meeting the daily needs of local communities means this uh, uh, policy emphasized that the forest department ensure that the local people get the various things from the forest which are essential for their day-to-day -day life means they have the first right on the resources of the forest which are essential for their uh, survival in the uh, forested areas and this policy also emphasizes the creation of a mass people movement with the involvement of women in the development and protection of forest and minimize the pressure on the forest. So these two objectives, they emphasize that how we will involve the local communities in the management of the wildlife. And this uh, policy has been hailed as a new approach because it uh, gave the space uh, for the local communities in the management of the uh, forest. And then uh, uh, in, uh, there is a, a program which is known as the Joint Forest Management. So uh, Joint uh, Forest uh, Management or the JFM, it is the partnership between the uh, local communities and the forest department for the effective management of the forest resources, or you can say the uh, wildlife habitats. And uh, Government of India, issued uh, the guidelines in 1990 and two and these guidelines which are uh, framed these uh, guidelines are provided the, provided the framework for state level rules resolutions and the guidelines so when these guidelines are uh, available so as per these guidelines, uh, communities which are living around the uh, forest areas, they can organize themselves into the, the JFM, JFM committees to protect and manage the nearby forest or the forest habitat or the forest areas located around their village or their community. And these uh, communities uh, can have their local bylaws and the micro plans. So areas which are under the uh, JFM committees, they are managed on the basis of the micro plans, which are prepared by the local communities and the forest department uh, with, uh, in, in collaboration. So it is not like the forest department prepared the micro plans. The micro plans will be prepared uh, by the forest department and the local communities. And uh, through these uh, guidelines or the framework, the local communities has or have the power to manage the use of forest by the members and also exclude the non-members. Means they have the right what resources, who will use what resources and how much resources will be uh, uh, utilized uh, from the forest. And uh, through these uh, guidelines, the forest department or the uh, people who involved with the conservation of the forest, they try to harness the strength and energy of local rural communities for uh, the protection and the management of the forest. Another thing is the uh, amendment of the Wildlife Protection Act. As I already told you that 
uh, two uh, categories of the protected areas, like the community reserves and the conservation reserve. Uh, they are included in the Wildlife uh, Protection Act. And this is to uh, elicit people's opinion in declaring government owned land protected for wildlife conservation. So at the time of the creation of these protected areas, government is considering the opinion whether they want to declare this area as a uh, conservation reserve or community reserve or not. Because in two other uh, protected area categories of the national park and the wildlife sanctuary, government does not need to have the opinions of the local communities. And these, uh, this uh, amendment in Wildlife Protection Act opens uh, some space in the law for people participating participation in wildlife conservation and management. And uh, this also uh, gives us the opportunity uh, to uh, showcase uh, the community waste wildlife management models uh, to the other nations of the world. So uh, let's look at the uh, conservation reserves. So uh, what is the special about the conservation reserve? So before uh, declaration of the conservation reserve, it is necessary to have consultation with the local communities. Without uh, consultation with uh, local communities, government cannot create uh, a conservation reserve. And when we look at the Conservation Reserve Management Committee, then it also it must have the participation from the villages which are located in the jurisdiction of the reserve. So all the villages which are located in the jurisdictions of the uh, Conservation Reserve, they must have their representative in the Conservation Reserve Management Committee. And this community advised Chief, Chief Wildlife Warden on the various uh, management issue of the conservation reserve. So by looking at this, we can understand that uh, this uh, conservation reserve uh, provide the opportunity for the local communities, uh, uh, local communities uh, to have their active involvement in the management of the wildlife. And then uh, another category, community reserves. So uh, in the similarly, like in the community reserves, government has to uh, take the opinion of the local communities and the community reserve management committee, which is responsible for conserving, maintaining and managing the community reserve. It must have five representative nominated by the village panchayat, the panchayat or where such panchayat does not exist by the member of the Gram Sabha. So it ensures that five members should must be included in the community reserve management committee. Means they have uh, their right or they have their voice uh, in the management of uh, the community reserve. And then uh, another program which is known as the eco development uh, program. So this uh, eco development uh, program. Uh, which is uh, conceptualized in 90s, it emphasized the involvement of local communities in management and conservation of wildlife. So uh, when you look at the uh, eco-development programs, there are many uh, people. It is not the uh, program which is implemented by the government. The implementation of the uh, program is done by the local communities, forest department, and various uh, civil societies uh, which are working for the conservation of the wildlife. So it has a, a holistic approach. And when you look at the uh, working of the eco development program, when the micro plants were created uh, with the participation of the local communities, then uh, the uh, advisory given to the forest department people is that when you go for the meeting with the local communities, you sit on the ground with the local communities. So they, 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 the communities uh, should feel that they are at the equal grounds. They are equal to the forest department or the people other. Because if you are sitting, uh, going for a meeting, you are sitting on the chair and people are sitting on the ground, there is a, like a gap uh, between the uh, people and the uh, higher authority of the forest department. So it's a, like an advisory uh, from the uh, various civil societies who are involved 
or in the coordination of the eco development programs that whenever you go for the uh, meetings you sit with the uh, people on the ground and discuss the various uh, uh, strategies uh, for the conservation of a area means what they will get so in eco development program the government try to uh, pass on the uh, information to the local community that if you help in the conservation you will get these benefit from the uh, conservation and they are getting uh, something or some benefit uh, from the conservation uh, programs so when we uh, look at the objectives of the uh, eco development programs so this uh, the first object is to improve capacity for protected area management to conserve biodiversity and increase opportunities for local participation in pa management acti activities and decision making reduce negative impact of local people on biodiversity reduce negative impact of local people on wildlife and increased collaboration of local people in conservation efforts more effective and extensive support for conservation and eco development so if you look at the objective of the eco development program they all uh, inclined towards the promotion of the local communities in the uh, wildlife management and what uh, strategy they follow so uh, uh, conserve pa by stopping those activities which leads to degradation so in consultation with the local communities uh, in eco development programs or the micro plans which are uh, designed they ask communities to stop those activities which are detrimental for the wildlife conservation minimization of the negative impact through alternatives so they discussed that if we want to stop these activities what alternatives can uh, local communities have because like if you are talking about that uh, too much pressure on the uh, like grazing pressure on the forest habitat is degrading the forest habitat or the wildlife habitat then we should reduce the grazing inside the uh, protected areas then how uh, it it is reduced so then uh, the uh, the forest department and the civil society they talk about the stall feeding of uh, the uh, livestock or the cattle or improving improving the breeds of the uh, cattle so that they will uh, get the higher returns and they can purchase the fodder from the market empower local communities uh, through participation in management setting of local advisory committees which uh, deals with the forest department and the local people and it also focused that there should be a definite financial earning from the protected area in like uh, the there is a greater participation of the local communities in the tourism activities so that they also get uh, the fund or the money or the revenue Uh, from the various activities which are going around the protected areas and strengthen pa management through participation and cooperation of the local communities and then uh, the uh, local uh, advisory committees in tiger reserves so uh, now it is mandatory for each and every tiger reserves to uh, set up a local advisory committee and this local advisory committee which is uh, very very important uh, advisory committee uh, to regulate the tourism uh, facilities tourism infrastructure and other activities around the tiger reserves it must have the participation of the local communities means two members from the local panchayat must be the member of the local advisory committee of each and every tiger reserve which are located in india so by uh, issuing the guidelines for the creation of the local advisory committee the government try to give the space for the local communities in the management of the tourism uh, activities in the tiger reserves so uh, these are the various laws and now uh, i shall discuss a few uh, roles which if uh, like uh, the local communities given the space or they involve in the uh, management what role they can uh, play in the wildlife management or how they help in the conservation of the uh, wildlife 
in collection of information. If you look at the uh, protected areas or the wildlife habitats in India, lakhs and lakhs people are roaming in the forest to collect various forest produces uh, from the forest areas or the wildlife habitat. For example, uh, many people are uh, going inside uh, the uh, our protected areas or the forest areas or the wildlife habitat to graze their livestock. So if we utilize uh, these people in collection of the information, because if you look at, uh, look at the role of a forest guard, he's roaming in the forest and collecting the information. So we can utilize them to collect the necessary information, which is imperative for the wildlife management. Like they can provide you the information about the movement of suspicious people in the wildlife habitat. They can provide you the information about the incidences of poaching in the forest habitat. They can provide you the information about the incidences of forest fires. And if you get the quick information about the forest fires, the forest department can uh, that is stop the uh, forest fire quickly and save the uh, large uh, part of the uh, wildlife habitat. And they can provide you the information about the movement of wild animals. So you can collect. Uh, the various kind of the information through these people who are roaming in the uh, wildlife habitat. And keeping this in mind, uh, the Madhya Pradesh Forest Department started a program and they involve the cattle grazers in collection of this information. And they organized the uh, Charvaha Sammelan in which they invited the various people who are going inside uh, to graze their livestock inside the tiger reserves or the forested areas. And they uh, gave uh, some uh, things or some equipment which can help in getting the better info information. So they started the capacity building uh, program of these uh, cattle uh, herders or the cattle grazers so they can provide you the relevant information which is essential for having the effective management practices in any uh, wildlife area. In uh, mitigation of uh, human uh, wildlife conflict, because uh, in all the protected areas in India, they are facing the problem of human wildlife conflict, or it's uh, like a biggest uh, challenge in front of the forest department and people who involved in the conservation. So. If with the help of the local communities, we create the quick response team in each and every place, which can inform you or provide the information about the conflict incidents, then it can help in mitigation of the human wildlife conflict in the wildlife habitat. Because if you have quick response team, which uh, you create uh, with the help of the local communities, they help in the early detection of uh, conflict incidences and timely handling of the conflict incident because timely handling of conflict incidents is very very important to reduce the antagonism or the anger of the local communities because if you go uh, if you got the opportunity you go in, in any village if forest department is not reaching uh at the side where the conflict is going on I, or they are taking four to five hours people start uh, getting angry that we are facing the problem and forest department is absent from the sea so if you have quick response team which can coordinate with the villagers and the forest department in handling or the timely handling of the conflict incidents then it can be a great help in the uh, mitigation of the human wildlife conflicts and to evolve such kind of the program, the forest department needs support from the various civil societies and the non-government organization working in different parts of the India. Like there is an organization which is uh, working in the Bidharb area, Bidharb area of the Maharashtra, it is the Tiger Conservation and Research Trust. And uh, this organization uh, created tiger ambassador in all the villages located around uh, these wildlife habitats. And these tiger ambassadors are 
helping in providing information about the uh, conflict incidences or they also help in the management of crowd in conflict situation if there is some conflict uh, then they help the forest department or the people who involve in the management of the conflict in managing the crowd and this is a great help even these uh, people uh, if you train the local communities and you have some uh, people who are trained they can help in the rescue of wild animal especially in case of the uh, reptiles and many uh, people who are trained in rescuing the uh, herpetofauna they are doing tremendous jobs and they are playing very important role in uh, mitigating the human wildlife uh, conflict and in prevention of disease spread because i already told you that the people are living around the wildlife habitats and uh, they are uh, taking their livestock inside the uh, wildlife habitats so there is a always uh, the high probability of a spread of diseases in wild animals from the uh, uh, from the cattle or the uh, life uh, from the livestock it is a mandatory for the forest department of all the uh, tiger reserves to vaccinate a livestock in the villages located in around the pas but if you do not involve the local communities in the exercise there is a huge opposition from the people uh, against the vaccination programs and people are not willing to vaccinate uh, their livestock or the cattle against the various diseases which are contagious in nature and they can be spread into the uh, wild animals but if you involve the local communities in this uh, drive then you achieve the required target of vaccination because until or un unless you vaccinate a required portion of the livestock uh, population it is not possible to prevent the spread of the diseases so if you want to achieve such targets then you must involve the local people or the civil societies in the vaccination drives and there are many examples where when the forest department involve the local communities or the representative of the local communities and the civil society in the vaccination drive they got the desired results in monitoring of the uh, wildlife uh, similarly like local uh, communities can play important role in monitoring the wild animal especially the dispersing animals and wildlife outside the protected areas and even uh, like in protected areas because now most of the protected areas uh, they have uh, uh, the tourism uh, facilities or the tourism activities going on so various uh, local people who are working as nature guides in the protected areas they can help forest department in monitoring of the wildlife and many times these nature guides provide the information about the uh, sometime like uh, once in a one tiger reserve that nature guide provide the information that one of the tiger has a, a trap in his uh, foot and several times people that nature guide inform about the uh, that the some uh, like unnatural behavior of a wild animals which is which, which is due to the any region like some disease or due to some other uh, things so these uh, local people who are working as a nature guide in the protected areas uh, they can help in the monitoring of the wildlife like if you can uh, look at the uh, that uh, there is a, a program uh, blaze wildlife guardians which is run by the uh, which is run in ranthambore tiger reserve by the uh, tiger watch and kana tiger reserve uh, by the corbett foundation so it's a, like a, a blaze wildlife uh, guardian it's a collaborative program uh, between the non governmental organization and the forest department and under this program the uh, the uh, non governmental organization they uh choose some of the uh, youth from the local communities and provided them some capacity building uh, training uh, to monitor the wild animals so these village wildlife warden uh, guardians they uh, patrol the forest area around their villages and provide the information uh, to the uh, forest department and in the picture uh, there is an example from the ranthambore tiger reserves 
so uh, these village uh, wildlife guardians they helped in a being locked period in managing the traffic in the area where a tigress with two cubs were stationed near a small town so there, there, there was a tigress with two cubs who stayed stations near a small town and uh, the village wildlife guardians of the Arantham or tiger reserve they helped in managing the uh, traffic uh, going on this uh, road which is passing adjoining to this town and even these village wildlife guardian help in capturing many uh, poachers in the Rajasthan. So you can uh, we can take uh, the help of the local communities in monitoring of the wildlife. In sustainable utilization of the uh, natural resources, because until unless we have or we should utilize the resources of our protected areas in a sustainable ma manner it is not possible to conserve the wildlife habitat so to uh, achieve this it is crucial that people who depend on them they should use them sustainably and this can be only uh, achieved uh, with the active involvement of local communities in the management because to get the desired results of the various program which are designed to reduce the pressure of the local communities on the wildlife resources, it is necessary that the local communities provide their full support. Like if I, uh, we want to uh, apply the high yield varieties of livestock or energy efficient stoves, biogas or stall feeding, until unless people are willing to provide their support, we are not able to implement these uh, programs successfully on the ground and even if we want to move uh, the uh, local communities from the traditional forest dependent livelihood option to the some other alternative livelihood options it is only possible with the active involvement of the local communities so uh, like you can take the example of the madhya pradesh where the local communities are uh, burning uh, the uh, leaf litter uh, below the uh, mahua trees to collect the mahua during the mahua and uh, due to this burning of the leaf litter uh, there is a uh, large number of fire incidences in the uh, madhya pradesh area so now forest department is uh, pursuing the local communities to adopt some other techniques to clear the ground under the mahua trees but to implement this uh, in the uh, field, we should have uh, the uh, support of the local committee or they are willing uh, to provide or to involve in such programs. And this can be achieved only through the uh, active involvement of local communities in wildlife management. So uh, uh, there are many protected areas in India where uh, the models of the active uh, involvement of local communities are uh, implemented and there are uh, like uh, great uh, success in achieving the desired goals of the conservation so i shall discuss few uh, success stories from the india so the uh, first uh, is the peria tiger reserve so peria tiger reserve is located in kerala and this tiger reserve it received uh, the National Tiger Conservation Authority biennial award for encouraging local people participation in managing the tiger reserve. So the uh, forest department in the uh, Peria Tiger Reserve, they started the involvement of local communities in the wildlife conservation. And they involve local communities in managing uh, pilgrimage uh, tourists in Sabrimala temple and even uh, they started one program in which they uh, convert the poachers to the protector means there is a community which involved in the poaching of the wild animals and smelling of the uh, like the sandalwood from the period tiger reserve so uh, the administration or the few uh, good officer of the forest department they started the program of the involvement of the these poachers into the protection activities of the period tiger reserve and this uh, provide uh, uh, the opportunities for the local communities in uh, uh, for the involvement in the protection 
and uh, they established one uh, sangam which is known as the vidyal uh, bana pathu kapu sangam so it's like a uh, organization and it is india's first uh, participatory forest management project uh, comprising solely of former poachers and the uh, sandalwood smugglers and members were initially uh, subject to three month long training so that they become uh, they are able to provide their inputs uh, for the wildlife uh, managements and uh, during these training programs they are also uh, pass on the uh, information why it is important to conserve the peria tiger reserve and then these uh, uh, this organization vidyal organization they have very very powerful intelligence network spread in both iduki and the thani district so and they uh, gather because they all they know uh, from where we get the information about the uh, poaching cases or the poachers so they develop their own network and they help forest department in capturing many poachers in the peria tiger reserve and these people are also working as tourist guides and elephant safari providers and they also engage or they are also patrolling the area uh, during the night so by involving in various activities now there is a uh, huge success in the peria tiger reserve and there is a uh, so this is the uh, one tiger reserve another example is from a uh, community reserve so it's uh, like uh, sing chung uh, bugun village community reserve it's a uh, 17 square kilometer uh, community reserve located in the anachal pradesh and if you look at uh, this uh, community reserve it is the great example of uh, merging or the marrying the traditional and the modern knowledge to conserve and protect the wild species so in this uh, community reserve young people or the youths are involved in awareness generation joint patrolling and rescue of uh, wildlife and promotion of the ecotourism so now due to this the area become the safe haven or the very good habitat for the many species of the wild animals like the red panda marvel cat golden cat and a very very rare and important species of the bird which is known as the bugan leochila bird so there are only 20 individuals which are found only in the northeast india and for uh, their tremendous uh, role in the management and the conservation of biodiversity in this community reserves uh, this uh, committee uh, got a IBA 2008 award for using its uh, traditional knowledge to protect the bird and its habitat threatened by activities like timber extraction, forest clearance, poaching, and infrastructure development. And then uh, the third example is uh, uh, from a uh, community biodiversity conservation area. So it is not a legally a protected area category but this is a community biodiversity conservation area which is which is now uh, getting uh, the attention of the people all over the birds so it is uh, located in the uh, long length district of nagaland and it is the very very important habitat for 85 species of birds including amur falcon 15 species of frogs as well as leopards barking deer cirrus and the otter and forest department and various uh, conservation NGOs which are working in the uh, Nagaland, they persuade the local communities for the management or for their involvement in the management of this area. And the con all the conservation effort which are implemented in this uh, community biodiversity conservation area, they are credited to 350 household households of the Foom tribe who have transformed around 10 square kilometer of a community owned forest into a refuge for wildlife. So uh, after uh, this, uh, their efforts, hunting of wildlife is no longer practiced in the designated area. Local communities have stopped using guns and the catapults and the organization has imposed a ban on logging, hunting, fishing, and uh, trapping. And considering this, 
uh, like by uh, due to these uh, efforts uh, the when the amur falcons are coming the, to this area in 2005 there are only 20000 amur falcons but after implementation of various uh, management program by the local communities now in in 2021 and 22 there are 15 lakh amur falcons in the area so there is a tremendous increase in the population of the amur falcons in the area so more and more amur falcons are stopping here and they are spending time here just because they are getting uh, the uh, safe area or the protection from the local communities so uh, although these are the uh, few success story and it look uh, very good but there are few uh, challenges for effective uh, involvement of local communities in management many of the programs of government lack policy support to ensure the involvement of local communities and if you look at like uh, role of local communities mostly restrict to consultative instead of being partner in planning and implementation so like they are consulted in various committees but they are not partner in implementation of various uh, strategies which are finalized at the time of the meeting so sometime it affect the harmony between the forest department and the local communities and the another challenge is the attitudes of uh, bu bureaucrats who had most of the management institutions like if you go to the meetings of the these uh, advisory committees or the local advisory committees or other things then most of the time these uh, the top bureaucrats who are like commissioner or somebody else they are not willing to listen the voice or the opinions of the local communities and sometimes it leads to overturn the voice of the local communities which alienate uh, the local communities from their active participation in the management of the wildlife so what should be uh, done now there is a need to incentivize the local communities appropriately to promote uh, their involvement in management and there is a need of Uh, like we should uh, develop a mechanism which enable deposition of funds by hotels and tour operators like wherever we have the uh, tourism uh, activities going on these tour operators and hotel hoteliers they should uh, deposit some funds in an account and that amount can be utilized uh, for the betterment of the local communities and promote the formation of eco cooperatives to manage sustainable eco tourism initiative and ensure that some of its benefits flow back to local communities and creation of wildlife management councils in pas that include the panchayat and village headmen and ensure that all key decision are run through these council for collaborative decision making so it is not necessary that uh, their role should not be only the consultative the there should be some mechanism which ensure that whenever the these guidelines will be implemented in the field they should go through these uh, wildlife management uh, councils uh or especially those uh, management programs which have impact on the local communities and all the uh, compensatory schemes for human animal uh, conflict to be administered through local village committees and registered ngos with only oversight of the forest department because uh, like most of the compensation schemes are with the government and sometimes the local communities has the complain that we are not getting the compensation or there are many uh, like uh, lengthy processes which uh, elevate the local communities from the compensation program so there should be a shift from uh, the implementation of the uh, con compensatory schemes and co opt youth from local communities into anti poaching and patrolling activities alongside the forest department in buffer zones of the all the protected areas in india mechanism to give beatage to boys of local communities in various communities set for wildlife management so there should be some mechanism should be evolved which enable that local people voice uh, should be heard or should be given uh the beatage in the various uh, consultative meetings which are headed by the uh, top uh, bureaucrats so this is all uh, thanks